Hi, Matt Muskell from Swiftix Software here. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. This is module four uh, from section two of my full Jira Cloud app development course on Udemy. Um, if you like this video, have a look in the description where there's a link to the full course. Um, otherwise, enjoy. So the first thing we're going to look at is issue panels. So let's go to our trusty developer, developer.atlassian.com site, where we find developer documentation. And down here, build with Forge. And if we go to the top there, we want to go to the reference section. And in there, we have modules for the manifest. So all the manifest modules. Because what we need is a Jira issue panel here on the left. Jira issue panel is Jira colon issue panel. What we need for this is a key. It's a required one, a required property. We need either function or resource. So functions are for UI kit. Resources are for custom UI. So we're going to use a function because we use UI kit. We're going to need a title and we're going to need an icon. Right, let's do that. Let's put that all in there. So we need the new module up here, which is Jira colon issue panel. We said we need a key. My issue panel will do for now. We need a title. My issue panel. And we need a function. Let's call it panel for now because we still need to define that in a minute. And we need uh, an icon. Now with the icons, I don't think Atlassian have quite sussed that yet because at the moment you can't actually um, deliver your icons with your app, you know, with your Forge app. You actually have to refer to an icon on the internet with a full URL. So I have one here that um, many, um, many of you will be familiar with. It's essentially just the Atlassian icon. Um, but it is literally just a URL to a resource on the internet. So you could store your icons on your website. You could use a, an Amazon Web Services bucket or some some other way of, of uh, delivering your icons. So it has to be a full URL. Now, now that we've done that, what we haven't done yet is we haven't defined the function yet. So let's go down here to the function section. And we say we define a new function panel and our handler for this will be index we're going to put in the same index.jsx file so it'll be index dot let's call it panel excellent that's everything for the manifest now let's go to index first thing we want to do is we want to create what we just said um, it's index.panel so export const panel equals render we do the same thing as for the other one but now we need to return not a project page like up here we need to return an issue panel and the issue panel exists in forge ui so what we'll do up here is we also import issue panel and now we can use issue panel down here there it is and in there let's say we will insert some information that comes from a function. So let's define that function. That function is now like this one up here. So we say const panel equals function. And let's just return some text for now. Return fragment. And in there we have a little bit of text. Uh, something about this issue and that's it so we now have an issue panel so I can deploy this with forge once we've deployed it we then test it out so I've got a test issue here already just waiting for the app to be uploaded at the moment.
And once that is finished, I will open this test issue and demonstrate to you the issue panel. There it is. So here it is. So you can see my issue panel. And as you can see, it says something about this issue. And I can remove this panel as well if I want to and click on that again. And the issue panel will appear again. Something about this issue. Now it's not very interesting though, because at the moment it just, again, just some static text. Another thing that you get with um, issue panels is context. So let's go back to the documentation briefly, because if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see that there's context that is delivered for UI kit. So there's the issue ID, issue key, etc. There's all sorts of things. Once you've got the issue key or the issue ID, we could run a REST API call to get information about it. Then, then we could use that information to display something really useful here. But for now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the issue key. But for that, we need something else. And that is something called use platform context. So we need to import that as well from Forge UI. It's use, sorry, use product context. We import that from Forge UI. There it is. And in our panel function, we now can, we can now use this context. So if you go to the documentation, you can find this in the iKit documentation. There we have the UIKit hooks. So let's have a look at that. So there's a couple of things that I explained here as well. We've used use state before. Um, it's well worth reading up on um, what that actually means. It, it means you can use um, you can use the state of an object without using the object. So there's a few others here, use action, but also a bit further down is use product context. And what product context has is a number of different things. There's things about, um, you know, there's things about the person, things about the add-on, things about the license. But what we're really interested in is the platform context. The platform context will tell us, and by platform they mean as a Jira or Confluence, and this is for Jira, of course. The platform context will give us the platform-related information. So, and what we want from the platform context if I just return to the other page that we were also just on, which is the Jira issue panel documentation. Um, what we want from the platform context is issue key. So the context that use product context returns is actually uh, a JSON structure. So it's platform context. And in there, we want issue key. And we want that to be bound here. So we say use product context. There we go. Now that we've got issue key, we can say something about this issue. And we just say issue key. Because now we have this information. Let's go for it. Forge deploy again. At this time, at this point, I could have tunneled. Yes. Um, if you just thought that, you're right. And it would have been much faster than having to wait for it to deploy. But I shall wait for this now return to our page and in a minute when we look at the issue panel hopefully it should give us the issue key so when we're looking at this test issue it should show us test dash one when we look at that test issue it should show us test dash two in our issue panel so let's open that up the issue panel is loading something about this issue test dash one as i said before now that we have this information, we can use the REST API to actually get information about this issue and actually display something useful. Anyway, that's how you get the context and that's how you build an issue panel.